Hi folks, thanks for joining me. I'm back out on the cattle ranch where I harvested the coyote a couple years ago out there. And I brought the Crossman 362 with me. I featured it in a couple videos. I'm out here doing basically a scout dry run for the air gun survival challenge that Dana and I are gonna do over at Mountain Sport Air Guns. And we had a pretty hard rain here the past week, a lot of flooding in California and such. But I thought I would come out, take a look around after the storm and just see uh, what's moving about. If uh, anything comes up, I was going to try to capture it with the Tacticam, but for some reason my batteries aren't working. And yes, they're fully charged. So I don't know what the deal is with that. I'm going to have to check it out when I get home and I'll report back later on that. But uh, I thought I would just do a little scout and just see what's moving around out here and bring you folks along. Let's go. If this old tub could talk, the tales it could tell. A lot of folks give California a bad rap for being all movie stars and Cadillacs but just a little bit out of town. And it's just like this, folks. There's a lot of California that is just like this. Just beautiful. Here's a little relic of time that had gone by here on the ranch. Just a huge water tank, which if you look down this way, there's an old wash tub. I think it fed that to keep the cows watered back in the day. Way out there, about 200 yards. I'm seeing activity, you see him running. With the 362, there's no way that's gonna reach. Look how far that is. I'm gonna try to get a little bit closer, but if they see me, I guarantee they're gonna bunker down. Well, I'm getting closer. I'm about 100 yards away, and he's peeking his head up about 11 o'clock position on the top of that rock. But there's a lot of open country. It's gonna be hard to get out there. Found another spot with a little bit better cover. So I'm looking at about 40 yards, getting in there. So now it's just a game of Hurry up and wait. And we're going to see who blinks first if they come out. Sometimes when they bunker down, they could be down half hour, hour or more. If they get really spooked and pressured. But uh, we're in a really good location right here. And uh, we'll see what this Crossman 362 can do. You guys are here in Interstate in the back. This ranch had been here long before the Interstate was put in. Back when whole Highway 80 was the only road going to and from the East Coast out here to Southern California. Got him. 40 yards. Oh, yeah. Solid. First fatty of the year, baby. Well, we started the year off right on the board with a ground squirrel, but let's not get too crazy. We're prepping for the air gun survival challenge, and that's going to be tough. You can't eat these ground squirrels. Some have tested positive for the bubonic plague. They have fleas that carry that disease, so you have to be careful with that. Also, they do so much damage to ranches and to farms and it's just a hazard for livestock. They're eating the crops. So a lot of farmers and ranchers want all these ground squirrels out of here. Now, as far as cottontails and jackrabbits, I have not seen any in this area. And I think they're being pressured really hard by the coyotes. So you know what that means. I'm going to have to come out later on and do some coyote hunting again out here. And it's hit and miss. I mean, it's hunting. It's Nothing's guaranteed. You're out here and you're just 
putting it all on the roulette wheel. But part of it is just coming out here, experiencing the outdoors, looking around, taking in the sights, working on your skills, your tracking, your navigation, and stalking and such. And it was tough to get up there 40 yards on these ground squirrels. One, they see movement really good, and they also see color. So where a lot of animals only see monochrome, they're picking up color in the slightest movement. So I was lucky enough to get in that wash, and uh, it was deep enough to where I was able to stand up straight and to be able to get a nice shot off. But uh, that's not always the case. Sometimes you got to take that 100-yard shot. It's a poke, especially with an air gun. I n No misconceptions. You're not going to do that with this 362. It's just not going to happen. I'm thinking 40 yards is the effective range. I proved it back there with that for tree squirrels, birds, and ground squirrels, rabbits. But um, it's going to be interesting. And I'm glad you folks can come along with me. There's another big old fatty. But he's probably about 80 yards away. So what I'm going to try to do is take the long way around the barn to get behind those rocks over there. And that would put me probably about a 35 yard shot. I posted up behind it down an oak tree. And I'm looking at probably 40 yards. Told you folks I was on a working cattle ranch. I'm gonna wait till they steer clear, no pun intended. And hopefully that fatty comes back out. Well, I sat on that burrow for about a half hour. And I think the cows help pushing the bunker down. So we'll make a mental note of that spot for another day. And then we'll press on and see what we see out here. I'll be coming back to help protect these folks from the coyotes. And there's a lot of them that roam around out here. Here's an issue that folks are going to have to contend with about this survival challenge. We just had heavy rain now for days and look, just a little bit of standing water. And I don't know if you'd want to drink that with cow patties all over the place. Now, if we're in an extreme situation, I mean, we'll deal with the medical issue later on, but it is tough to find drinking water out here just about any time of the year. A lot of folks been asking me, John, why did you guys pick the Crossman 362s? The short answer, simplicity. It's just a multi-pump pneumatic, 22 caliber. It's not a huge powerhouse, but as you can see with that ground squirrel, it does get the job done. And in an area where you don't know how long you might be out in the bush, you know, if you bring an air tank, could be an issue. You need a pump. If you do CO2, it's temperature regulated. So a multi-pump pneumatic seemed like the best bet. And sometimes old school still rules. So we're out here putting it through the paces and we're talking affordable. Just the basic air gun is 99 bucks. Yeah, I put a metal breech on it and the scope. So you're looking probably total investment under $200 and you're in the game and it's very ergonomic it's light i can't say enough good things about this system but you would definitely want to church it up a little bit with the accessories because the plastic breech on there it's just junk the trigger assembly on here i found was really nice it works really well so if you guys are looking for just a cheap truck gun or just something to kick around with plank around with these crossman 362s might be the answer for you I have a flashlight that attaches to my kydex knife sheath that came out somewhere on the trail i noticed it about a two-thirds of the way in and what i'm going to do now is backtrack looking for that needle in a haystack because it is it's not a coyote brown but it's like a bronze color and as you guys can see hey bronze is everywhere guys so come along we're gonna see if we can find the needle in the haystack
man, you just never know what's going to happen. I come around the corner and this horse was just running at full tilt boogie. And then about a minute later, a cowboy showed up riding there. He's just working him after the rain, just trying to get him out here, get some time on the trail. We had a nice conversation. I didn't film because a lot of folks just don't like to be uh, filmed and that's okay. But uh, it's a fun day. Now I have to play that game of tracker, retracing my steps, trying to find that flashlight. Hopefully I can do it. We'll soon find out. Well, nothing was on the trail. Normally, in my experience, if you lose something, it usually fell out of your pocket right outside your vehicle. So let's take a look. Oh man, I lucked out. Yes. The hunting gods have been great today. It's not very often you find lost gear. I'm just glad I was able to recover it. I'm gonna have to double check the uh, interference fit on that clip on the Kydex knife sheath. But that just goes to show you that you gotta double check your gear before you go out in the woods. I need to find out what's wrong with the Tacticam. I'll report back on that, uh, my findings. All the batteries were charged, so I, I just don't know. But uh, very good day out in the woods, met some interesting folks, uh, exchanged some intel. So next time I come out, should be a very productive hunt. And with that, folks, as soon as that motorcycle goes by, I want to say thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care.